Today's Neville Goddard conversation is on awareness of being loved. Thus, I can only imagine lovingly mediating God to appear in, on, and as harmonious relationships. This is what I would like to discuss with you today from personal experience. To do so in a way that I trust is beneficial for you, I title today's conversation mind map, Changing the Feeling of I to Be As I Am. Changing the feeling of I to be as I am. Inspired by what Neville had shared one time when he said, Imagination is the redemptive power of the world, and you are actually mediating God to the individual. And I also realize it is information, circumstance, environments, etc., by using it in a loving, wonderful way. True nature is love. There is no denying it. Created in the perfect image of the Creator, true nature is love. Thus, it is only illusions in mind that generate the appearances of not love, we could say. Illusions only appear to disappear. What remains eternally is God as love, true nature, created in the perfect image of the Creator. So what do I imagine to appear as relationships? Any relationships, romantic relationships, personal relationships, family relationships, business relationships. If it is not from the premise of truth, knowing that I am love, I release that identification to that untrue imaginal activity. I like how Ramana Maharshi said it one time. He said, the solution to your problem is to see who has it. Very precise. The solution to your problem is to see who has it. The problem is an illusion of I. I am aware of what I imagine. Release identification to the illusions of I, and they disappear. Illusions only appear to disappear. What remains eternally is God as love true nature, created in the perfect image of the Creator. As I am transcended to appearances, can I remain as I am, and thus only witness God in, on, and as the outer appearances of God? I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. And to what degree is my Father greater than I? Well, can I witness greatness appearing more so each moment with increasing frequency on a continuous basis? This is what he's referring to here. Imagination is the redemptive power of the world. There is only God and only God appearing and only God animating all that appears to appear through the eye, the single eye of God. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. You are already pure of heart. Accept the eternal fact now to persistently, effortlessly witness life through the single eye of God to reveal God everywhere. Now, when we speak of feeling of I, as he says here very precisely, when I speak of feeling, I do not mean emotion, but the acceptance of the fact that it is fulfilled. The fact is love. I am love. Be still in the presence of God and know that I am love. God is love. To imagine otherwise would be revealing identification. As Ramana Maharshi said again, the solution to your problem is to see who has it. Who has it? Only I appear to have it. 
Is it true? It's an illusion of I, for I know that I am love. So, how do we go about changing the feelings of I or releasing identification to the illusions of I? Well, consider this as Neville had shared in his Changing of the Feeling of I lecture. He said, The I has neither face, form, nor figure, but it does mold itself into structure by all that it consents to, all that it believes. So you can imagine anything, anything. Yet, if the individual is identified with their imaginal activity that is not from the premise of truth, knowing that I am love, they say, I have a problem. There is no problem to the witness of the individual who appears to have a problem. Unconditional observation, as in, I am unconditionally loving, blissfully loving. So it's clear then, I am aware of what I relate to appearances, and it is untrue if it is not from the premise of love. So we may have no idea, as he says, of the unnumbered superstitions and prejudices that go to mold this inner formless I into a form which is then projected as our environment, as the conditions of life. Truly, life has no conditions. I am beyond conditions. I may generate illusory-based conditions, yet they are not from the premise of truth. As I be still in the presence of God, I know that I am unconditionally love. Thus, I mediate God to people, environment, circumstance, information, personal relationships, business relationships, friendships. We shall discuss friendships and business relationships as examples. As it is crystal clear, as I am aware of what I imagine, so it is crystal clear to be aware of the inner speech in relation to friendships and business partnerships, vendors, clients, staff. And if it is not from the premise of truth, I release those identifications by imagining lovingly, thus mediating God to them. And so, as a result of doing this, these superstitions and prejudices, they disappear. As I mentioned earlier, the illusions only appear to disappear what remains eternally is God as love, happiness, peace, bliss, and fulfillment. True nature, as he said, acceptance of the fact that it is fulfilled. True nature is fulfillment, is love, unconditionally and beyond individual feelings of it not being that way, which is untrue. Here are some examples. If the individual says, I can't make friends because I am not interesting enough. This is in relation to friendships. It's clearly untrue. The individual is taking the Lord's name in vain. I am is the Lord's name. Awareness of being, that's God. Exodus 3.14 And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am. That's the child of Israel. I am hath sent me unto you. I am aware of what I imagine. So this would be taking the Lord's name in vain if the individual were to say, I can't make friends because I am not interesting enough. That would be suggesting that there was separation in I am. There is no such thing as separation in fundamental reality. It can only appear that way through identification to the illusions of I. So we change the feeling of I. I am in a wonderful, harmonious relationship with people wherever I appear. Next, the individual may say, I can't find friends who understand me because I am too different. I only appear different. 
Yet I am not different. There's only God. Fundamental reality, I am, from which each individual arises from. I am the same, yet I appear differently based on what I imagine. So it is untrue then to say, I can't find friends who understand me. The understanding is God. There's only God. Only God appearing. Only God appearing to animate all that appears. In, on, and as God. To imagine otherwise would be revealing identification to untrue imaginal activity. And no shame and condemnation, as Ramana Maharshi said. The solution to your problem is to see who has it. It's an illusion of I, as I am aware of what I imagine. So I release identification to the illusion, and that illusion disappears. So these are examples of imaginal activity that I once identified with, which I know is clearly untrue, as I am aware of what I imagine. So as I release these untrue illusions of I, friends started to appear, people started to appear always wanting to hang out with me, always wanting to do things with me. There was a time where it appeared that people didn't want to be around me, which was a result of identification to an illusion of I. And as I released that identification, so did those illusions of I disappear. And relationships started appearing from the premise of truth. Thus, I was mediating God to them. Prior to that, I was generating these illusions of separation between them and me. I am cannot be divided. It is an illusion to think otherwise. Fundamental reality is wholeness, completeness, thus I am love. So, then we also see that if the individual says, I can't find friends who understand me because I am too different, it's an illusion. The individuals that appear differently are different emanations of God and thus celebrate through experiences, such as, I have this friend who is interested in talking about subject A. Then I have another friend who's interested in talking about subject B. So I appear to be with friend A at times, and then I appear to be with friend B at times. Yet, they both understand that I am love. I understand that they represent love. That foundational reality from where we all arise from is love, and that's God. As mentioned, there's only God, only God appearing, only God appearing to animate all that appears in, on, and as God. Another one is, I can't feel comfortable in social situations because I am too awkward. I can release this identification through reminding. Romans 12, 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. God's will is love. It is an illusion of I to imagine otherwise. So certainly then, as I have been created in the perfect image of the Creator, as you have been created in the perfect image of the Creator. The foundational reality from which we both arise from, and thus truly there is no separation, it is an illusion to imagine being uncomfortable with you. So I release that identification. It's an illusion of I. As I has no face, form, nor figure, but it does mold itself into structure by all that it consents to. So I consent to love. I believe in love. And beyond belief, I know that I am love. And as you arise from the same source, you are love. To imagine otherwise would be illusory. So certainly, through bringing awareness to these untrue imaginal acts 
as we've been discussing here, identification is released. And if you prefer a conversational approach like this, which you could do with yourself, I recommend watching Thursday's video where we discuss the sleight of mouth language patterns by Robert Diltz, 14 of them. I'll link in the description to it. I trust you'll find that to be beneficial to release identification to these untrue illusions of I. So let's look at some more examples in business relationships. If the individual says, I can't network effectively because I am not confident. The thought of lack of confidence is an illusion of I. I am in harmonious relationship with people wherever I appear. By accepting truth that I am love, I can only mediate God to them. And thus they're mediating God to me. Thus I relate to them ideally by acknowledging the fact that authentically our communication flows. We could say that is confidence. Unconditionally, no judging, no shaming, no condemning. Simply I am. That's what I mean by in the beginning here. Changing the feeling of I, to be as I am, love. Thus, as he says here, imagine lovingly, as imagination is the redemptive power of the world. And you are actually mediating God to them by using it in a loving, wonderful way. Here's the interesting thing. As these identifications or the illusions of I are released, you Notice that you automatically mediate God to them. You operate from the single eye and thus can only imagine lovingly. This has been my experience over the years. This has been my experience working with people who have applied this in this certain way. Exactly like how he describes it. Choosing to imagine lovingly to release the identifications of the untrue illusions of I to be as I am, thus mediating God to them. Another one could be that the individual may suggest to themselves or may identify with untrue imaginal activity that represents, I can't negotiate deals because I am not persuasive. There's no need to persuade by being as I am. Communication flows authentically in, on, and as a harmonious relationship. Then there is, I can't gain respect because I am not experienced enough. Fundamental reality from which all individuals arise from is unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Thus, I have everything as I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. And to what degree is the Father greater than I? Well, can I allow the witnessing to occur of greatness appearing more so each moment with increasing frequency on a continuous basis? That is what is meant by, I and the Father are one, yet my Father is greater than I. To imagine otherwise would be, again, identification to an illusion of I. And so what does God appear as? Wonderful life experiences, conversations, synchronicities, everything happening ideally automatically from the premise of truth. And respect is unconditional as there's no separation. Truly, I am cannot be divided. To say that I need respect is an illusion. I am unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. So in, on, and as the journey to manifesting the visions, Opportunities may be presented to not shame or condemn the individual, but rather reveal the illusions of I, so that I can release the illusions of I by being as I am. By imagining lovingly, I release the illusions of I. By being still and knowing that I am, I automatically witness loving imaginal activity in relation to people, environment, circumstance, and information. 
as I am aware of what I imagine. And so it's wonderful that Ramana Maharshi said it that way to simplify it. So let's echo it again. The solution to your problem is to see who has it. Only I appear to have it, as I am aware of what I imagine. And I know that I am love. And if I imagine unlovingly, it is an illusion of I. And I release those illusions of I. I change the feelings of I to be as I am. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I am aware of what I imagine. I realize true nature is love. As a result, I imagine lovingly of people, environment, circumstance, and information appearing to mediate God to appear in, on, and as the outer appearances of God. Only God is real. God is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Everything else are illusions of I. I release the illusions of I to be as I am, witnessing God wherever I appear. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.